Morning. So today I want to talk to you about the fire churn. So the fire churn is a curious device which I first heard about a few years ago when I was researching into friction fire methods. And I stumbled across this picture of this huge spindle um, uh, which was in a contraption a little bit similar to this. Um, with people pulling on a rope from both sides. There's only one picture, I couldn't find much out about it. So I did quite a bit of research and did quite a bit of reading anyway. I was doing quite a bit of reading anyway. And I was reading um, The Golden Bell by Sir James Fraser, which is, uh, who was an anthropologist in the late 19th century, early 20th century. And he was wrote about the about folklore and about um, fire ceremonies um, and fire rituals in the Celtic times and he was describing a practice called um, Tinegan, um, um, need fire and force fire which was all about in Celtic times in times of distress or at significant times of the year such as Samhain or Beltane the community would extinguish all their half fires in the village and they would then welcome in a new pure fire which all the half fires would be lit from. Also they would parade all the animals and people through the smoke as they, it would be seen as purifying. And he described these apparatus uh, which were used to welcome in this new pure fire and this is my interpretation of one. So basically, they'd have a large um, spindle, which would be like a, I guess a trunk of a tree. In this case, this is a hazel. Um, so this is a slightly smaller one. I have got a larger six foot ash spindle. Um, they would have a log at the bottom. I'm not sure they'd have a cat, but we've got cats with ours. Um, so then you have a log at the bottom, so this one is poplar. Um, you need a sturdy frame um, to support a large bearing log. This one is holly. Um, so your frame needs to be really sturdy. Um, like this one. So with lots of cross beams and support so it doesn't fall apart. And then the important thing, because this is friction, you need to get the necessary downward pressure to create the friction at the bottom. So if you've got really large um, spindle log and a really large heavy half log that might be enough to provide weight but sometimes it's not and you may have to add additional weight on such as I've added some logs onto each end. Um, also what you need to do is make sure the whole thing doesn't fall apart and the spindle doesn't lean over and the log doesn't twist off so I sort of secure it at one end with rope to sort of um, hinge it, anchor it. Um, I've tried to um, not make it look too modern though I have used nails um, in this. Um, so what I love about these is that they're ridiculous. You know, uh, most of us nowadays who um, use friction fire methods um, use things like the um, bow drill and the hand drill which is by one person and are um, I guess easy to use. These are super sized and the only reason they're super sized was to make it difficult and that the whole community would have to come together to help welcome in new fire. It wasn't just one person doing it and it might not work and it might take a lot of effort, it might take a whole day and it's not that how quick because this was for ritual purposes and to uh, uh, welcome in a new pure fire. So it needed to be something that would take effort and take um, determination and take everybody working together and over time, and it took a long time, you'd get a build up of energy in the people and they might start singing, might start chanting. You know, similar methods um, are used in India and they still use them today and I've seen um, videos of um, horizontal um, fire churn in India which is even more ridiculous because as you may know, it's very hard to get horizontal um, pressure 
and um, when using friction methods. And in there, there's some of the people getting into quite an ecstatic state because uh, they've probably been doing it for hours on end and chanting as well while they're doing it and it's all quite a spiritual experience. So these contraptions aren't made for uh, efficiency at all. It's all for ritual purposes. Um, so this one I can operate on my own. They're not designed to be operated on their own, designed to be used um, groups of people. I have a larger one with a six foot spindle which we use at a um, Thirty Sioux League gathering each year um, and the children involved and involves everybody um, pulling on each end of the rope to welcome in fire and if you get everything right they work beautifully well. Um, it's all about getting and making a solid frame and spending time on your materials and checking everything is right before you start um, making sure there's no polishing at the bottom making sure the spindle spins freely um, and if you have a little trick on this one to make sure there's less um, friction at the top but I'll leave that as my own little trick for the moment um, we are allowed these tricks so how old are these very good question um, as it is a friction method there is no archaeological evidence. There is a lot of written records about these devices. They were used all throughout Europe. Um, they were used in the Highlands of Scotland up until about the 1850s um, and there is a written evidence of them. There's lots of written evidence actually. Um, there is apparently written evidence in the um, Catholic Church because of course um, these were seen as heathen and so the church tried to ban them, as they tried to ban all heathen practices. So there are written records, um, church, re um, Catholic records, church records, um, where they, the church banned them um, different times, going back as far as the 6th century. Um, they may even date pre-Christianity. Uh, pre um, they are probably more medieval, I would say, and maybe more from the Bronze Age, Iron Age, when you had sort of better tools to construct these sorts of things. I can't see these being around before Bronze Age. We never know. We never know. We don't, we, we don't know, do we? Um, so, but they, to me they look medieval. Um, and I, I, I love them. <laughs> I think they're absolutely bonkers. And they work beautifully well in, uh, in ritual. Um, yeah, I just think they're, they're brilliant. And yeah, for me, they're to be you know using them with groups of people to work together to communally welcome in the fire is just a beautiful thing to behold. And when they when they work well, they work well, and you end up with a huge mother of an ember, the ancestral fire, the ancestral ember. It is. Uh, beautiful thing to behold. So I'll do a short demonstration of its inaction. Um, I'm only doing it on my own today and I may not get an ember but that is not why I'm doing this clip because I just wanted to share uh, a bit more about what Sacred Half Fiction Fire is about. That I'm not a bushcraft school, that my Sacred Half is more about exploring um, folklore and ritual fire and our connection with fire and connecting with fire on a deeper spiritual level um, through friction methods um, yeah and working with crazy things such as this so let's see it's in action okay I've had to make a few minor adjustments weight wasn't quite right so I swapped the um, logs around so the heavy logs on the right hand side, the lighter ones on the left hand side. Um, so I wrapped the rope a few times around. Basically just alternating the ring on it.
So, made another adjustment by just straightening the spindle slightly. So, so, so there we go. It's a lot easier when you have a team of people doing this. That's the whole point of this. It's about the community working together. So, let's go. Here we go. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. Welcome a new fire. Welcome a pure fire. Welcome the ancestral fire. Using the old, old technique as used by our ancestors. The old healing technique, welcoming the new pure fire. So there we have the ember, all now to a friction of two woods. As is told by the Vedic tradition in that spindle is a male, the half board is a female. And the friction of the holy male and female woods procreate and Lord Agni. And here we have the embryonic fire, the ember. It is such a truly magical way welcoming the fire it takes time it takes effort it takes time sorting the materials you know these are super sized materials it takes time sorting them from fallen wood as i will not cut live wood um, for using friction fire um, not for this anyway so it takes time it takes patience, it takes knowledge, we've lost the knowledge, I've spent hours and hours researching and reading and dreaming into this contraption which I finally brought into, into life. They're still used in Russia, there's still lots of um, the enactment groups who use them in Russia, they're not as forgotten in Russia as they are in the UK. There was also a reconstruction in Scotland in 2015 as part of an installation, art installation um, for the um, Helmsdale Highland Games. So not truly really forgotten and I'm reinvigorating their use. So, but they're not purely Celtic Scottish, they were used in England as well. There were records that have been used in Northumberland. There were records that have been used in Germany as a book actually or not fewer. Not fewer is also another word for need fire or forced fire. So there's lots of written records of this practice and so it may continue, may it be re-remembered. Now 
that is a coal. Blessed be, blessed be, the ancestral fire. Blessings.